All right, guys, welcome back to Bears franchise, and we're 2-0 and going up against the Chargers. They're 0-2. They're going to be reeling. The morale's probably going to be a little low, so we have a chance to take advantage of a win here, and then that can catapult us into two divisional games against the Lions and the Vikings. We do get our mock draft and our regional focus scouting, so let's, let's do this first because, again, I want to kind of dive into this a little bit more than what we we did last year uh elizabeth nakubi is our area scout in the national and i think we got to do offensive tackle so that's what we're going to set our focus on why does it say we can't change that oh oh oh! it's it's the regional focus that we have to change which i kind of like right now outside linebacker wide receiver we actually need to change that to i want to wide receiver or corner if we look, a corner is the top player in the draft, but there's also a wide receiver. Again, I, we talked about this last, I think last game. I kind of want to wor work on trying to get some corner depth, potentially, maybe to help with Jalen Johnson if we can't re-sign him. And then just in general, it's always good to have really good secondary depth because players get hurt. And if we don't have really good depth, then we're going to be starting corners that aren't necessarily going to match up well against these really good wide receivers that we have in our division, Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Adam Thielen, Amase Brown, Cooper Cup. We got to have a good secondary in our division just because of that. Now, in the central, wide receiver needs to be our scouting focus. That's the top of this or the top prospects in this region. In the northeast region, our strengths are outside linebacker, and that's definitely, definitely what. If I could set outside linebacker for all of them, I would. And I was almost going to do that, but it would just be a waste of the XP points that we possibly could get. And then uh, I think we go outside linebacker here again. Offensive tackle, you know, I would like to do that, but we really do need outside linebacker uh, play. Although Cashman has not looked too bad. We haven't really seen good the uh, player that we got from the Chargers, we haven't really seen him come in because mainly we run a lot of nickel formation and we just only have two linebackers out on the field most of the time. And that's Leighton Vander Esch and Cashman. But Cashman has proven to be pretty good so far. I mean, he's earned player of the week two weeks in. Defensive player of the week, I mean, he's had, what, two interceptions, a sack. He might even have two sacks. And uh, he's definitely on the trend to earn another contract with us if he's willing to re-sign with us. He might, you know, be one of those players who won and done. He had a good year here and he wants to go somewhere else who's actually a contender. But we do have the mock draft coming up with us 2-0. Oh, we're probably going to be towards the end of the draft. And some of these players we were definitely looking at, particularly outside linebackers and tackles, we talked about some of these. Now, Henry Cook, Alabama, outside linebacker, was somebody that we could potentially be interested in. He sees his pursuits in A and, well, actually, you can't. His pursuits in A and his block shedding is a B. It'd be interesting. But let's just go down here and see what where we, they have us taken. An outside linebacker, Will McIntyre. Now, he's around 1-2 to two projection. He has 8 tackling in C zone coverage. Will McIntyre. Okay. So, we'll have to look at him out of South Carolina. South Carolina always has some pretty good prospects every year, and it's weird they just never perform uh, in the NCAA. But let's, let's look at him. Will McIntyre out of South Carolina. They have us projected to take. We can put him on one of our favorites here. And you see, again, tackle is A, coverage is C. We still don't know what his pursuit and block shading is. We're at 35% scouted. Uh, it says he's a physical player who delivers bone crushing hits. Savvy defender with a ball in the air. Has a motor that runs through the whistle. Often looks to rip the ball from runners. Shows good discipline. Loves to utilize a spin move. Has a swift arm, arm over move in his arsenal. So it seems like he's a pretty like well-rounded 4-3 linebacker here. He can... You know, step back in coverage. He's got pretty good rushing ability. And uh, obviously his tackle is an A. I'm actually kind of interested in, in, in Will McIntyre here. Now, his acceleration, good to great. Agility's decent to solid. So he's not really a great athlete as far as strength and speed goes, along with agility. But, you know, we've seen some linebackers that who... Potentially, and if we're drafting late in the first round, I would be mad, I would be mad with taking him if his skills line up. So his tackles an A, that is really good. Now injury is a D, which is kind of yeah, it's kind of questionable, but we'll we'll keep an eye on him. Caesar Reyes is projected to go number one overall to the Seattle Seahawks, who surprisingly enough did not take a quarterback last draft. I wonder who their quarterback is now. And the top five finishes off with Brandon Flynn going to the Broncos. The Saints going with Kendrick Thomas. Bradley Lindholm, left tackle, going to the Giants, who is going to have a ridiculous offensive line if they keep Andrew Thomas, uh, Evan Neal, and then Bradley Lindholm. That, that's going to be a really solid offensive line. They'll probably have to move somebody in at guard. 
or I guess they probably won't re-sign Andrew Thomas. And then finally, the Giants take Henry Cook outside linebacker, who I don't know if I feel like we've looked at. And then we got the Lions going with Tyreek Jones. Now, Dak Prescott is gone from the Cowboys. You see Anthony Black is there. But let's take a look at Henry Cook. And yeah, we have already checked him out. He is he's right outside linebacker out of Alabama. His pursuit is an A and block shading is a B. And he has pretty much all the player notes that we want. You know, he's a physical player, bone crushing hits, has a high motor, shows good discipline, utilizes a spin move, has a swift arm over move. So all that's all that's good. Uh, he has all of the solid traits. And again, his speed is, you know, it, it's actually a little worse than uh, the guy we were just looking at. So if we go back and check out Will McIntyre, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that his, his physicals are just a little bit better. So it's going to be interesting to see Will McIntyre or Henry Cook out of Alabama, which, which one of those players are going to be one of the best. Now, I do think there's a lot of depth outside linebacker this year. I mean, we've got six players that potentially could be taken in the first round at outside linebacker. Although Clayton Cruz and Tremaine Warner are speed rushers. I just now saw that. So unfortunately, they're they're not going to be someone we're projected to take. And we haven't gotten high enough to see what type of player Henry Cook and Mike Theory is, both out of Alabama. Uh, which should be a 4-3 coverage linebacker or good tackler or whatever. So we'll, we'll just have to see. It's interesting. I'm excited for this draft because I think if we can get some good uh, linebacker play, our defense is going to be ridiculous. We also have two players now that's ready for player negotiations. Jalen Johnson, resign interest is pretty low. And then Darnell Mooney. So we have a ton of cap room. We have 87 million. And Jalen Johnson having a superstar X factor, or no, he's not X factor, but a superstar development trait. He wants a warm weather state. That's pretty much his, his major thing and not wanting to sign with us. But I'm willing to give him a six year deal. If we could lock him up until he's 30 and we don't have to worry about, well, actually five years, I think would be great. And he wants a five-year deal with about 12 million a year, which is pretty average for someone. Why does it look like Jalen Johnson just put in like a ton of like chapstick before taking this, this video? If we go five years here, that's going to give him a little bit more money. Actually, we'll just say neutral. We'll do five years. I'm going to bump him up to 7.5 mil and give him a five mil, uh, a five mil, signing bonus so he's gonna he's gonna get 12.5 million a year which is 0.4 million so four hundred thousand dollars more per year than he is uh expected to get and we'll see if he's interested in that actually i'm gonna go ahead and bump up his signing bonus to 5.5 mil which is going to give him hopefully enough because his interest isn't really high into signing in oh no jalen johnson i could find a better team and free agency that will match this offer so does that mean we potentially have to franchise tag jalen johnson i i think i think it does we, we, i mean he's a key component in our secondary and if we can sign him that really does change the way we draft darnell mooney i'm gonna wait i don't know exactly he, he's not very interested in signing us because we don't have a franchise quarterback also, we have Calvin Ridley and McCole Hardman, who we signed. Maybe we go out and get a wide receiver in the draft or the good slot wide receiver. I don't know, but I would like to sign him. Three years is really not that, that bad of a deal. And he has proven to be pretty good in the slot since moving him there. I think it's a bad move to at least just make an offer and see what he says. He says, I need a bigger offer to overcome the team not being a fit for me. Oh, okay. So <laughs> contract negotiations not going well, even though we're 7 0. We also have Cole Komet coming up. We have Santos, who we got, we're probably going to have to look at getting rid of him and potentially getting another kicker. We have Travis Gibson, Justin Jones. So we've Blake Cashman, of course. We talked about 27 years old. He might not want to resign with us. Of course, Justin Houston was a mistake. He shouldn't have been with us. Anyways, Mario Edwards Jr., death player. We can move on from him. Jamar Johnson, who we saw get an interception or a sack last game. There's some big signings here. Kendall Vildor, Vildor. So we have three of our four starting corners wanting a deal. And we're going to have to make sure that we uh, do our best to try to keep this team intact. Now, things could go south. You know, but right now, 2-0, hopes are high. I feel like the team is, is, is doing a really good job. But Justin Hubbard, deep passing, especially with Mike Williams and Keenan Allen. It's going to be tough, but they also like to run it. But they pass it more. And defend the deep pass is really not something that we've seen a lot of teams do against us. So I'm going to continue with the defend the short pass because he is still averaging a 90.7 QB rating whenever uh, throwing underneath. I think our overall fatigue is still good, and we, I'll just keep using half pads here. I'm going to put the starters in. I didn't realize that I had 
all the backups in for Travis Gibson are in our edge rushers. That's probably why he hasn't developed. It's kind of like my fault. Now on defense, our offensive game plan, should we be throwing it? I'm trying to think with this front seven. I don't know if we still got Joey Bosa and I don't know who's starting opposite of him. And we also have Derwin James we got to worry about. Who, who likes to come into the box when running it? So maybe throwing a short is the best thing for us to do. They don't blitz a lot, so and they play a lot of zone coverage. So I think if we if we play zone, underneath is going to be really open for us. Our player health, still have pads. We've got our running backs in, and I think we have to continue to do backups for running backs because David Montgomery is getting used so much. But across the board, I think everything else is good. Another thing that I am going to do is, I think we keep this at one interception. I imagine they're going to throw it a lot. Is I'm actually going to decrease our sliders for run blocking because we had such an historic game and running again has still been kind of easy. I'm gonna drop it a few ticks, make it a little bit harder. All right, nobody gets hurt in practice again. That's always a great thing. If we go ahead, go ahead and look at our stats, you kind of see what I mean. David Montgomery is leading the NFL in rushing, of course, after that last game, but he's averaging 5.4 yards a clip. So already at 400 yards, averaging 200 yards a game, He's fumbled once, and he's got six touchdowns. I mean, at this pace, he's he's your MVP of the league at this point. We'll have to see if that continues to, to be the case. I don't think that it will. Offensive yards was six in the NFL, so Chicago Bears, one of the best offenses in the in the NFL. I doubt it. We got some players to upgrade. Let's go ahead and do that. Kevin Jenkins gets an upgrade point, and we're going to continue with a hour blocker. Number 76, he's been pretty good this year. I haven't seen him get beat too often. He's got that start development trait, so I'm hoping that he can be like an 85 overall whenever he peaks. But without further ado, Chicago is going into SoFi Stadium to try to lay another loss onto the Los Angeles Chargers, who are reeling 0-2, looking to try to get their first win and give Chicago their first loss of the 2023 season. We're still wearing Blaze Orange. We're not stopping until we lose. Let's get started. Oh, check out beautiful SoFi Stadium here in Los Angeles. We've got two teams with two different outcomes that nobody expects. Chicago 2-0 on the back of David Montgomery, MVP front runner already this season. Going up against the 0-2. That's right. The 0-2 Los Angeles Chargers looking to try to get their first win at home against the Bears, this would be a step in the right direction for Chicago if they're able to beat a more talented Chargers team. And the Chargers would increase their morale if they're able to beat a team 2-0 here today at home. Justin Herbert, Justin Fields, who gets it done? Let's find out. All right, so there is Justin Fields, Blaze Orange. A nice contrast with the blue of the Chargers. So you see Justin Fields, one interception, a big improvement to what we had last year, but he still has not recorded a, a touchdown in the air. All of the touchdowns from Chicago, I'm pretty sure, have been on the ground. I don't even know if Justin Fields has ran one in yet, but Justin Fields here today with high aspirations for his team trying to get Chicago back into the playoffs for the first time in a long time. The first play is underway, and we're going to try to run, and we get Zach Johnson and Joey Bosa in on the stop. They credit with a sack, but really it was a net gain. We, we barely lost any yardage there. So second and a long 10. We're gonna pass it again here. David Montgomery, you're gonna get open. No, the pass is incomplete. Justin Fields over once and coming out twice off the rim, Chicago throwing it after a really good game from uh, David Montgomery, not interested in running it against the front of Chicago. That's thrown underneath to McCole Hardman and Chicago stops, or I'm sorry, the Chargers stop Chicago three and out. We saw that last week from Chicago, but it really didn't matter in the actual result of the game. Bosa almost gets home to Darnell or to Justin Fields there. All right, so Justin Herbert, number 10, probably one of the most talented, if not the most talented as far as arm talent goes in the NFL at this point in time. Just raw talent. He's got an electric arm, can make all the throws. It's like, what, 6'7", six, 6'6"? Six, six. Big quarterback, can run it a little bit. Pretty talented guy overall. And you see that Harris, he's already completed two passes. And there's a fumble! Keenan Allen drops it! Leighton Vander Esch picks it up. 
had a huge turnover. We saw this last week. Chicago goes three and out. And then I can't even remember who we played last week. Turns the ball over. Keenan Allen already in a bonus territory. Gives it up and gives the ball back to Chicago. Now, Justin Jones did get hurt. So we're going to have to put Mario Edwards in. And we're going to go ahead and start running the ball a little bit more. We were playing the Giants. That's who it was. So the Giants did the same thing. We'll see if there's a, a different outcome for the Chargers here today. Dave Montgomery picks up his first four yards on the ground. All right, so third down and three. Another opportunity for the Chargers D to stop the Bears. Can they do it? That Cole Komet underneath. He doesn't move forward. Stick your arm out. Joey Bosa on the stop. Ball on the 45. Does Mike Eberflus decide to go for it here early with some of the momentum still on the side of LA? Yeah, good, good tackle by Joey Bosa there. And no, they're going to punt it. So the Chargers get another opportunity. Punt goes to the 11. And we're going to blitz. We're going to bring some pressure. Justin Herbert completed two passes. He's looked very sharp. He's already got like 60 yards passing on the day. It's naughty trying to get into the backfield and Eckler loses a yard. Eckler, very talented running back. The likes of a Christian McCaffrey or Dalvin Cook can run it, can pass it. Very talented. And there is another completion. This time, Mike Williams. This was a question mark coming into this game. Could Chicago's defense match up against the talent on the offensive side for LA? You got Keenan Allen. You got Mike Williams. You got Austin Eckler. Can this defense, specifically the secondary, can they stop Justin Herbert from creating big play after big play? They're really going to be on the front seven to try to get some pressure on him. As we see, there's some pressure, and that's thrown out to the left and incomplete. That's what we need to do. Justin Herbert's first pass incomplete. He's got three for four for 64 for 62 yards so just kind of a, an idea of what to expect on this offense a lot of passing a lot of big plays we got another blitz there's pressure and there's the man that wants to get paid big money jalen johnson you want to talk about a man that wants to get paid rejects our contract and then comes out sits on this route watch him sits on the route makes a great play jumps in front of the receiver and that was just a time to throw by Justin Herbert. And who was that? Number five, Palmer. And uh, he just takes it to the house. You want to get paid in the NFL at the corner position? Make plays like that. That'll get you paid. Seven nothing Chicago on top. Oh, good defensive stop. Austin Eckler trying to do a jet sweep gets stopped. And it's third and seven. Do we blitz or do we play zone? I think we have to blitz against Justin Herbert. We have no offensive yardage and we're up seven to nothing. All the offense has came from the Chargers and they're losing. Nice pickup by freaking Austin Eckler. Did you see that? This is why Austin Eckler is one of the best running backs in the NFL. Look at this. Coming over, takes out Leighton Vander Esch. Good blocking all the way. Justin Herbert able to deliver a strike to Mike Williams. Ball in the 39. Herbert trying to tie this game up. Clean pocket. He tries to throw it deep and he goes down. Robert Quinn with the sack. Oh, there's a nice completion. Justin Herbert finds his guy, Keenan Allen. Gain of 15, third down and five. They've passed it nine times, only have ran it once. Kind of give you an idea of what they're going to be doing in this game. And there's a completion. Justin Herbert, eight for 10, and all 10 of his passes have been caught. A little fun fact for you. One was caught out of bounds. The other one is obviously interception. See that out route? It's pretty much impossible to stop on all Madden. So third and 14 after a holding penalty. And Justin Herbert's going to have to convert. They pick up some positive yards. A good chance they're going to try to kick this and attempt a field goal. That's thrown to the outside. Goes out of bounds. Gerald Everett, the tight end. Gets it to the 45, and I think that's going to be a little too long for a field goal kick. So Pinion's going to come out and punt this. So really not a lot doing offensively here. It's really only been that one defensive play. Mistake by Herbert has been the difference in the game. Montgomery cutback picks up five. Oh, we got space. Fields takes it all the way to the 39, a 22-yard rush by Justin Fields. 
pocket awareness by fields has progressed in this franchise you see steps up in the pocket feels the pressure coming from his edge rushers joey bosa and then he takes it almost to midfield for a gain of 22. even though justin fields has not really been dynamic throwing the ball for touchdowns he has been methodical and he hasn't turned the ball over as much as we saw last year so pretty good uh sign for chicago as you see him take off and run it again for a gain of six there's montgomery catching it going out of bounds justin fields three for four for 28 yards not a lot most of his yards came on that pass completion right there do we do a little bubble throw here when mccall hardman I, i've only tried this like once or twice and it really hasn't worked out too well it's that's yeah that, that could almost been intercepted so we're winding down on the first quarter we're gonna get this playoff before the quarter ends actually i don't this is zone coverage we'll try it yeah derwin james that was a terrible decision by me i got aggressive shouldn't have thrown that ball against arguably the best safety in the nfl right now <laughs> That's a good way to end the first quarter. So both quarterbacks have thrown an interception. So really what I should have done is either thrown it to Mooney. I'm sorry, not Mooney, but Jones Jr. Right now, he might have caught the ball or throw it to the outside of Darnell Mooney. Got a third down of seven. We can make a stop here, get the ball right back into our offense's hands. We're blitzing. Pressure coming. That's broken up. Good play by Hughes free agent signing opposite of Jalen Johnson he might be our number one corner next year if we can't sign Johnson and Pena's back out to punt it oh beautiful pass to another guy in contract negotiations Darnell Mooney and oh Mike Hughes is upper arm fracture so now we're gonna have to put Kyle Gordon in mm, going up against Mike Williams that's not what we want Montgomery with space to run. Heroin James comes in and makes the tackle, but not before David Montgomery picks up the first down. Little screen pass. David Montgomery picks up another first down. Methodically moving the ball down the field. So we got a third down one ball in the 28. Having some success running the ball. Chicago is against the front. Oh, I didn't, I didn't. Ooh, I did not mean David Montgomery's hurt. No. Front running MVP David Montgomery is hurt. He's running off the field holding his left wrist. Hopefully it's nothing serious. Usually arm injuries are like upper arm fractures <laughs> like we saw Mike Hughes have. So, oh my God. Oh, David Montgomery and Mike Hughes are now out and that's gonna be a multiple weak thing. Calvin Ridley catches that, tries to take it to the end zone. That's twice we've seen Calvin Ridley get inside the five and not been able to make a play happen. And we're going to pass it again. You see all those plays are locked out, forcing us to use something different. So we're not using the same play over and over again. See if Justin Fields can't open it up a little bit. There it is. First touchdown through the air for the Chicago Bears goes to Calvin Ridley. Oh, third down. Keenan Allen comes up with another huge catch. So Keenan Allen with three receptions for 65 yards and, of course, a big fumble that really their best drive of the game was that opening play where Keenan Allen takes it like 40 yards. Oh, man. No, Austin Eckler breaks the tackle of Leighton Van Der Esch and look who comes in and saves the tackle for a touchdown. Cashman. I'm telling you, Cashman's slowly earning a spot i can't believe eckler just truck stick vander ish like that then cashman hunts him down and makes a good touchdown saving tackle so now inside the 30 herbert this is his first opportunity to get some points for the offense and that's thrown hit off the back of the head two wide receivers collide not paying attention not good communication that brings up a second down and 10. herbert all by himself no one round with him passing it that's complete. See, Eckler's kind of tired there off to the left. That's thrown Keenan Allen and picks up another first down. I'm going to be quite honest with you. This is what I was expecting out of the Chargers offense. Granted, the pick six, you take that away, it's a seven-point game. It's really the difference. Okay. Is that CJ Spiller? No, Isaiah Spiller. I don't know. <laughs> I said CJ Spiller. But yeah, I was thinking that this is Chargers were going to come down and move the ball against us. We were going to have to match them point for point. 
Play action. Herbert sacked for the third time. This time, the rookie practice squad player. Good coming from the Chargers. Makes his first big play in the NFL against his forward team. How cool is that? So that sack makes this a third down and goal. Now ball on the 12. So they're going to have to pick up 12 to get the first down and the touchdown. Pressure coming again. Herbert escapes, throws it away. Field goal will ensue. Oh, I got hit as we threw it. Second interception of the day. And of course, the house call. Xavier Woods, of course it would be. No, JT Woods. Oh, complete. Darnell Mooney for a first down. Huge completion. And that will bring us to the two-minute warning. There's Herbert wide open over the middle. Ball at the 48. There's a nice completion over the middle. Use another timeout. We have one timeout left. Third down ball, like on the 45 of the Chargers. So I think we can, I mean, obviously this is a huge first down if we can get it. Oh my God. They sent the house. Oh, what a good defensive stop. Into the first half. We've got a four point lead. Now, I feel like passing really hasn't been a problem. We probably need to continue to run it inside, especially now that we don't have David Montgomery and need more help. And then passing, they are having a lot of success. Yeah, throwing it medium. I think that's 100% completion percentage. Yeah, I think we gotta defend the medium pass. Throwing underneath, if we play some zone, we'll be okay. Make them have to work for it, but they're picking up a lot of big uh, plays on third down, especially to Keenan Allen. So we're gonna have to try to stop that, eliminate it as much as possible. Oh no, Keenan Allen, not Keenan Allen, Austin Eckler, a little wheel route. That's so hard to stop against the linebacker. He breaks the tackle of Cashman, but good team tackling there as another defender. Vildor comes in and makes the stop, but they're already at the 48 and they're gonna hand this back off to Eckler who picks up eight, four rushes, eight yards, all of his yards on that one play. He's not really had too many opportunities to run it because the Chargers were down early, really forced uh, LA to do what they love to do, which is pass the ball and not a lot of opportunities to, to run it. Another sack, Justin Fields. I mean, uh, Justin Herbert holding on to it a little too long if you ask me. Gibson now with one and a half sacks on the game four total for Chicago, matched by three for the Chargers on their defensive side of the, of the ball. Got some pressure. There's another chance to make a sack. Open guy, but look who it is. Cashman coming in, bringing the pressure, forcing an incompletion, and we get this ball back to our offense. No way. <laughs> no way. So a special team kerfuffle. Kafurful? Kafurful? How do you say that? I don't know. Anyways, a blunder on special teams. Austin Eckler gets it. The Chargers have a chance to take a lead. That's really unfortunate. They run it. They've got they've got the end zone. Oh, good stop. Vanderish with the stop, forcing a field goal. And our defense is holding solid. I can tell you what, the running game for us doesn't feel the same. <laughs> without Montgomery. Uh, well, there's good success there. Almost a first down, third and one. That's Herbert's best run right there. Five rushes, 18 yards. So averaging, what, three yards a carry, a little over three yards a carry. And we saw before the, the season or before this game started that Dave Montgomery is averaging five yards a carry. So that's a big difference. He does get the first down there, but if he's out for more than four weeks, which he probably is. That's Linville Joseph there on the stop. It, it's really going to force our hand to pass it more, which could be a good thing for us to figure out if Justin Fields is our guy and if he can carry this team. So third down 11, a lot of the momentum is on the side of the Chargers. Oh, it's dropped. Calvin Ridley with a chance. I, I kind of led him closer to the corner, but I think he still should have. Yeah, I threw it more to the left. I should have just just straight up bullet passed it and he would have caught it for sure. It's a good pass breakup though. Can't be mad at it. Oh, fumble! Robert 
Quinn picks it up. Vander Esch with the sack, strip sack actually, and we return it. So 14 of our 21 points have came from defensive turnovers. So Justin Herbert with two huge turnovers that has accounted for the difference in this game. This is given to Eckler who gets hit sticked by Vander Esch with one arm. Man, our defense. I think I probably need to turn down the fumbles a little bit because they're happening a little too often. Was not expecting this, this out of him. Probably a reason why they are 0-2 to start with. Eckler picking up some steam on the ground. So the third quarter ends as Chicago has a lead 21 to 13. Look at that. Pretty even across the, the board as far as statistically goes. Obviously, the Chargers with a little bit more passing yards. But again, the difference in the game have been the two touchdowns by the Bears defense has given them this eight point lead, but LA looking to try to even it up on this drive. They can get a two point conversion, they can tie it. They're down to three, We're gonna run it again. A lot of success here, but Eckler gets stopped. Fourth down and one, do they decide to go for it? I, I would imagine they will. Chargers one of the most aggressive teams in the NFL going for it on fourth down. And of course, <laughs> They are. We're going to play zone coverage because for whatever reason, coach thinks they're going to pass it. I think they'll run it. No, they do pass it. And it's complete. Oh, beautiful pass. Keenan Allen. Wow. On Eddie Jackson. And really, Keenan Allen. I mean, that was just that was just a perfect play. You can't stop that on defense. So they're going to go for two and try to tie this game up. I'm gonna control Naughty here and see if we can get some pressure on Justin Herbert. Oh, we get double team. There was some pressure and it's batted down. Jalen Johnson making all types of plays after declining our contract, proving that he is worth more than we offered him. It's a huge pass breakup. So we got a third down and 11. We really don't have too many plays I'm comfortable running. Maybe Hardman can get open here. We also have Cole Komet. I don't know what's Set it underneath. Hardman gets the first down. Two huge third down conversions. Justin Fields to the McCall Hardman on this drive. Keeps us moving the ball and taking time off the clock, which is the biggest thing here. Another third down and 10. I don't know if Hardman's going to get open on this one. Catch it. It's complete. Herbert with a nice catch. And that's going to, I think we'll take just about all the time off the clock force LA to use, I think maybe at least two of their timeouts. A first down could potentially seal the game for us. Oh, we almost had it. Our lineman ran into us. Actually, that's not bad. We picked up seven. So we've got an opportunity if we pick up three. Now, first down here will win the game for us. I think we just play it safe and run it. I really want to pass it. But Herbert's been averaging about three yards a clip. Let's see what he can do here on this play. <laughs> of course, we don't get it. Armstead makes the stop. Do we go for it is the question. What does coach want us to do? Uh, he wants us to kick it. That's going to, yeah, that's a smart play. Because then they will have to go down with one timeout and they have to score a touchdown. That was almost a block kick. Did you see how how slow that was? That was, that was about to be a block kick. Luckily, Leonard coming off the edge there trips over our offensive lineman. And now it's up to our defense to do what it's done. This entire franchise... And let's make some stops. So here we go. Minute 48. Can Chicago get a win here in LA? Herbert completes that to Eckler, who doesn't go out of bounds. This is the thing I think a boneheaded move for him. The clock will continue to run out there and pick up a five. That's thrown underneath. Keenan Allen holds on to it, but does pick up the first down. It feels like every time he catches it, it's a first down. Minute 12 remaining. That's thrown, broken up by Johnson. Oh, beautiful pass. Herbert gets that to the 47. He's closing in on 300 yards passing for the game. And he'll probably get it. As he gets hit right when he throws it, it's incomplete. We, I'm going to blitz again. One-on-one -on -one against this offense. This could bite us in the butt, but it also could force a turnover. Herbert audibles. He sees something he didn't like trying to get a matchup. 45 seconds remaining in this game. And that's almost intercepted. 
The Chargers need to take it 47 yards down the field. That's throw Keenan Allen, and it's broken up. He almost had it, but when he comes down with it, he gets crushed by Eddie Jackson, who he beat earlier on that last touchdown pass. So now here it is, final play for the Chargers on fourth down. Oh. Picard's wide open. Zach Picard is wide open. What happened? Blown coverage. Because Mike Hughes is not in. That's why we have. Oh, a huge mistake. Playing zone coverage there. So 28 seconds, ball in the 30. We need to take it. 40 yards. 40 yards, and we got this. If he can get. There we go. Oh, Justin Fields. That was a man. We needed to connect on that. That's complete. Calvin Ridley. We use a timeout. So I'm Darnell Mooney. You want that contract? Make a play here. There he is. He's open. Clock it. Six seconds remaining. Mooney. He wants it. We're going to give him that contract in Chicago for the second time in three weeks have a walk-off field goal to win it ball snapped the kick is up and it's good chicago takes a two point lead with roughly what three seconds left on the clock we're gonna squib kick this actually no we're not we're not gonna squib kick it i've seen some crazy things happen we are gonna sky kick this and force them to try to kick or do a kick off return to win the game we just need to stop here and the game's over there it is chicago 3-0 and it escapes in a thriller so what a game man justin fields leads the comeback second time this season might i add and we are three and oh depending on what happens in the rest of the division this could give us a two game lead we also get that interception so we get nine uh reward points we're looking good we're three and oh and we're going to we do have two huge injuries though man this four weeks for both which is usually typical oh man well that takes montgomery out of the running for mvp unless he just does something like ridiculous let's see if the lions are oh and two see if they get a win we're gonna be facing they do the Vikings also win, so good thing we got that win there. If we'd have lost that, that definitely would have uh, thrown things. Look at all these practice squad players. What the heck? The Falcons signed them. The Browns. Everyone just signed all of our practice squad players. I mean, do we have? Were they that good? <laughs> all right, guys. So we got a lot to talk about and discuss in the next video, and then we've got another individual game going up against T.J. Hawkinson and the Detroit Lions. I'll catch everybody on the next one. Make sure to hit that like. We're three and zero, baby.